Hey kids! Welcome to Grade 4, Chapter 14. And it's me again. Yeah, again. Fractions and decimals. Now you may be thinking, this sounds familiar. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it really does. It's supposed to. We taught you fractions last chapter. And we taught you fractions and decimals in grade 3, too. So, take a check down memory lane and recall some of this information. And we're going to teach you some new information, too. Don't worry. Section 1 has tenths and hundredths. We can think about them using models, or using a place value chart, or just using numbers. So let's work out this model. Well, there's 10 parts, so 10 is the denominator, and then 5 is the numerator. And then we simplify it. OK, that's, that's done. And when we use the same thing for a place value chart, it would be Ones is nothing, so zero point. And then tenth is five. If you read that fraction out, it would be five tenth. So this is also five tenth. Now for what about for this one? It has one hundred as a denominator and sixty as its numerator. That simplifies into six tenth or further into three-fifths. So six-tenths. There's nothing in the ones, zero point. And then tenths, there's six. There's nothing in the hundreds and anything after that. Yay, done. Now we move on to some practice problems. Write a fraction and a decimal for each shaded part. Then write the fraction in simplest form. So for this one, we have 10 parts as a whole, so that's the denominator is 10. And then there's 8 shaded parts, so 8 over 10 can be simplified into 4 over 5. 8 tenths, 0 0.8. This is not a J, this is a semicolon. Semicolons look like J's, except not really, because the bottom part is supposed to be shorter. That is also 10 as a denominator, except it only has three shaded parts. And 3 over 10 can't be simplified into anything else. 3 tenths, nothing in the ones, 3 in the tenth, 0 0.3, or 3 tenths. This one has, oh, it's 100 as a denominator. And it's 60. Oh, we did this before. Right, remember up there? Which simplifies into 6 over 10, 6 tenths, or into uh, further into, actually. The simplest form is 3 over 5. So since it's also equal to 6 tenths, then the decimal would be 0 0.6. Now for this one, we also have, well, 10 as a denominator. And seven of them are shaded. Seven is a numerator. We can't simplify this further, so we move on to the decimal part. And seven tenths, 0 0.7, or, well, seven is in the tenth spot. This one also has, well not also I guess, 100 as a denominator and this time 90 as a numerator. That simplifies down to 9 over 10. 9 tenths. Which in a decimal form would be 0 0.9. This one is also 100 as its denominator 50 has its numerator. That's 5 tenths or 1 half. And we know that 1 half is always 0 0.5. Yay! Now we're done that! We're done the first section! Hoorah! Let's move on 
to the second section. Relate mixed numbers and decimals. Now, if you don't remember what a mixed number is, it's a whole and a part of a whole, or, well, a whole number and then a fraction right beside it. You can use models to help you write mixed numbers as decimals, or you could just use a fraction itself. So the mixed number over here is 1 and 7 tenths. Well, technically it's 7 over 10, but it's 70 over 100 over there, but it simplifies. So the decimal would be, well, 1 is in the 1's place because that's a whole. So it's 1 point instead of 0 point. And it's 7 tenths. So 7 would be in the tenths place. So 7. 1 point 7. You can read it as 1 point 7. Or 1 and 7 tenths. Yay! So now we move on to the second example. Where, oh, okay then. Nice. It's 2 and 36 hundredths. The decimal would be, this time 2 is in the 1's place. So it's 2 point. Let me make that point bigger. And it's 36 hundredths. So 36 hundredths. The 3 would be moved up to the 10th. And then the 6 would be here in the hundredths place. So it'd be 2.36 or 2.36. Nobody really says that though. So it's 2.36 or the formal way to read it would be 2 and 30. Six hundredth. Hooray! Let's do some practice problems. Write a mixed number and a decimal for each shaded part. Okay, at least we don't have to write out the entire thing which is the read bit. Now, question number one. There's one hole, so then we already have one on each bit. So this one's one point. You don't do anything with the one here. And this one is 30 over 100, which could be simplified into 3 over 10. So 1 and 3 over 10 would be the mixed number, and the decimal would just be 3 tenths is, well, 0.3. 1 point 0.3, 1 and 3 tenths. Question number two, there's two holes this time, so it's 2 and 2 point on this side. And it's also 3 over 10, because it's 30 over 100. 3 over 10 and 2.3 for this one, or 2 and 3 tenths. Question number three, it's also another two. And this is, oh, that's a half. Oh. Two and a half is one over two. That's a mixed number. And the decimal would be, since a half is 0 0.5, 2 2.5. There's one for the whole, so then one, one point. And this one is 75. Okay. So it's one and 75 hundredths. So then it'd be 75 hundredths. Because think about it, if you say like in the ones bit, 
it's 75 ones, it would still be 7 tens and 5 ones. Yeah, it's the same over here. But 75 over 100 can be simplified into 3 over 4 for the mixed number. In higher grades, they start disliking mixed numbers a lot. And they start preferring decimals more and more. So yeah, mixed numbers is more of a real life thing. And decimals is more of a, uh, well, it's still real life because money. But decimals is a more mathy thing. Right, each has a decimal. Now this is one whole. And nine tenths. Nine tenths would just be 1.9. Well, 0 0.9, 0 0.9 actually. You could say 0 0.9 or 0 0.9. And this one is 3 as a whole point. Oh, 5 hundredths. So then there's nothing in the tenths, and there's a 5 in the hundredth. 3.05. Okay. So let's take a break from all that and do some, oh, it's, it's make a model. Let's make a model. Now, after two whole chapters, this is the third, with me, you guys should know how much I hate this strategy. But unfortunately, we still have to teach it. It's very slow, not very practical on a test, and just generally very tedious. But it's good for imagination. So we're still going to go over it. Alicia baked 24 muffins for her class bake sale. They sell for, oh wow, 50 cents or 0 0.50 dollars, 0 0.5 dollars, half a dollar for four. At our school bake sales, if you got two dollars for one, that'd be good. Anyhow, how much money will she make for her class? Way too little because, well, other people are selling it at much higher prices. So what do we know? There's 24 muffins. 24 muffins. Oh, if you think the muffins are bad, the cupcakes sell even higher. 0 0.50 dollars per four. And we need to know how much money she will make, or how much money she would make, if she sells all of them. Our plan for this one is make a model where we basically draw 24 muffins and attach a price tag to every four of them. So we draw 24 And then we circle them in fours and attach a price tag. How much time is this going to take you? A lot. If you want to bake all the muffins yourself, it's going to take you even more time. So what should we do instead? Division. So I'm not going to do that because I don't have 24 muffins to spare. And 24 divided by 4 is, well, 6. 6 times 0 0.5 dollars, or half a dollar each, would be 6 over 2, which is equal to 3 dollars. So, 3 dollars. Actually, when, when you're doing this, show your work. Like, do like 24 divided by 4 and all that stuff. And try to keep it on one line. Well, each equation on one line. But for this sake, yeah. Is the solution reasonable? No, because at real bake sales, a muffin would sell for like $4 each. But for this case, it's reasonable. For the case of the question, reread the problem. Alicia baked 24 muffins for her class bake sale. They sell for half a dollar for four. How much money will she make for her class? Well, we got our facts straight. How can we check our answer? We look through our logic and see if there's any holes, which there isn't. Now one thing. 
Math problems? Sometimes the answer wouldn't seem reasonable for real life. Like I've seen a math problem where it says, I forgot the name, let's just use um, Cindy. Cindy ate, well, she didn't, went over to a candy jar and ate some candies. Half of the ones she actually ate were blah, 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 golden wrappers, black wrappers, and then there was all these fractions and all that. It was actually a pretty good question, but for a higher grade. And then it's like, how many candies did Cindy eat? Cindy ate 120 candies. I remember that very clearly. And then you just wonder, how do you just sit down and eat 120 candies? Don't do that at home. I mean, I know it's probably a little kid's dream, but if you've ever tried it, you would have a very bad stomach ache, and you'd probably spend the rest of the day in the bathroom for uh, <clears throat> reasons. Solve using the make a model strategy. Isabel makes and sells pairs of earrings. Ah, she used five beads for each earring and charges, okay, 25 cents or $0.25 per bead. How much will 10 pairs of earrings sell for? So she uses five beads for each earring and a pair is two earrings. So 10 pairs of earrings would be 20 earrings. And five beads for each earring would be 100 beads. And since she charges $0.25 for each bead, then 0.25 times 100. Okay, any decimal? You know how when you times, well, multiply, anything by 100 or 10 or something with a bunch of zeros, you add that many zeros? Yeah, it's kind of like that for well, decimals, except you push the decimal point back instead. So since there's two zeros, you push it back twice, that would be 25. So 10 pairs of earrings will sell for, they will sell for $25. Well, 25.00. Because it's just 25, not 25.01. There are two elephants in a circus act. In their routines, each act uses two other animals. How many animals perform all together? Well, it means that there's one elephant in each routine, and there's two elephants, well, no, other animals, that perform with the elephant. Or at least, that's what it's supposed to mean. For all we know, it can mean, oh, there's an elephant, and then the two other animals is another elephant and another animal. So that could be just three animals. If it was a trick question, it'd be anywhere from three animals to six animals, so yeah. But let's pretend that it's not a trick question. Six animals perform all together. All right, seems legit. Mrs. Lee wants to make, well, decides to make, apple pies. If there are five apples in each pie, and she makes four pies, how many apples will she use all together? I swear, if you make pie models and put five apples in each model, that's just, that, 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 that's just time-consuming and kind of depressing because you could just use multiplication and you're in grade four and you should have remembered your multiplication tables already in grade three. So, what's four times five? Twenty. She will use twenty apples. Well, Elizabeth has 12 flower pots. Over half of the flower pots have roses in them. Well, wait, no, not over half. One half of the flower pots have roses in them. One third of the flower pots have sunflowers in them. And the rest of the flower pots have daisies in them. How many flower pots have sunflowers in them? How many flower pots have daisies in them? Well, sunflowers, right? 
I know that it wants you to, well, model or draw 12 flower pots and then like divide them into groups and all that, but no, just no, just divide, division. We learned this for a reason. Anyhow, one third of the flower pots have sunflowers in them. Well, I guess we have the number of sunflowers, well, flower pots with sunflowers. It's one third times 12, otherwise known as 12 divided by three, which is four. Four have sunflowers. Whoa! How many flower pots have daisies in them? Well, it says the rest have daisies. So one half of them have roses and one third of them have sunflowers. Okay. What's one half of 12? Well, what's 12 divided by two? Six. So the rest is 12 minus six. Well, the number of rose, ones with roses. Minus four, the number of ones with sunflowers, equals to the number of flower pots with daisies. So 12 minus six equals to six. And six minus four equals to two. So two have daisies. Yay! We're done with that question, now we move on to question number five. Rachel opened six packages of paper for her scrapbook. Each package of paper had 20 sheets of blue paper and half as many sheets of green paper. So what's half of 20? 10. Well, 20 divided by two is 10. How many total sheets of paper were there? So in one package, assuming that this isn't a trick question, it's like, no, there's an infinity number of red paper. Yeah. That, that'd be bad. But assuming that there's only blue paper and green paper, which is kind of weird, but okay, then there'd be 30 sheets of paper in each package. And she opens six packages. So six times 30 equals to 180. Now imagine getting 180 sheets of paper and modeling this out. That'd be a pain, wouldn't it? It would. It really would. Almost literally, because you probably get a paper cut. Don't take that as a challenge. So there were 180 sheets of paper. Don't try to give yourself a paper cut, okay? Brianna rollerbladed two miles. Then she returned home to get her friend. They rollerbladed together for three miles. How far did Brianna go altogether? Okay then, this one's a bit of a trick question because we're going to assume that she just rollerbladed two miles straight from her house and then came back. So that's two plus two equals to four. And then she rollerbladed with her friend together for three miles. It doesn't talk about coming home, so we're just not going to think about that. So then four plus three equals to seven miles. She went seven miles altogether. Oh, okay, you, you aren't supposed to put periods. You aren't supposed to put periods in mis midair. Question number seven, the last question of the section. In the school play, there are 12 props in the first act. There are 33 different props in the second act and 23 different props in the third act. Uh, okay, that's way too many props. But how many different props are there in all? Well, actually, no, it really isn't, but Okay, so this can also be a trick question because it doesn't say whether or not these 12 props are different. But since this is a grade five question, the chances that they aren't different is kind of low. 
So we're just gonna pretend they are different because who knows? They might go like, oh, these 12 props are actually the same as 12 of the 33. But well, we're just gonna pretend that that is not the case. So 12 plus 33 plus 23 equals two. 68. There are 68 props in total, or in all, you could write that too. Now we're going to move on to section number four. Compare and order decimals. You can use models to compare and order decimals. Order the numbers from least to greatest. Or you could just use numbers. No, seriously, I'm going to show you. So compare the decimals. We realize that, okay, let's look at the ones place of the decimals first. Well, two is obviously smaller than three. So this one's the smallest. So for the least, we could put 2.75. And it says since... The 63 over 100 is smaller than 68 over 100, then 3.63 is smaller than 3.68. I mean, it's not wrong, but let's see. 3 is equal to 3, 6 is equal to 6, but 3 is smaller than 8. Therefore, there, this, not 0, 3.63 is smaller than 3.68. Because the numbers that aren't equal, well, going this way, we can't just skip around the number. Well, is smaller. Okay. So least to greatest would be 2.75, 3.63, and then 3.68. So here's a reason on why you can't just skip around the number. I'm going to use this space right here, just so everybody can see. So, imagine this. So which one's bigger? 107 or 110? 110, right? It's because you go, oh, 1 and 1 is equal, but 0 is smaller than 1, right? Right, right, so 110 is bigger than 107. But if you skip around, you could be like, oh, hang on. Yeah, okay, that's, that, that looks weird, but it could be like, oh, one is equal to one, but zero is equal to zero, but then one is smaller than seven. No, you don't skip around, you use the same values on the, okay, we've seen a value chart. Use the same columns on a value chart for a reason. There are columns for a reason. Anyhow, now that I'm done lecturing, let's do some practice problems and ignore all of the models because we could just use numbers. So, this one. Oh, okay. 0 0.7 is equal to 0 0.70 is equal to 0 0.70000. You can add an infinite number of zeros to the end. As long as you don't add any other number, you could add an infinite number of zeros. So, 0 point is equal to 0 point. 7 is equal to 7. But then 5 is bigger than 0. So, 0 0.75 is bigger than 0 0.7. 0 point is equal to 0 point but zero is smaller than six. So, 0 0.06 is smaller than 0 0.60. 0 0.24 and 0 0.33. Zero point is, well, zero is equal to zero, but then two is smaller than three. So then 0 0.24 is smaller than 0 0.33. Then there's 0 0.66 and 0 0.77. Okay, if you really want to think about it, if these, well, the ones place, anything before the decimal point, which is to the left, is equal. If they're equal, just ignore it. And then think, 
Is 66 smaller than 77? Yes, yes it is. So 0 0.66 is smaller than 0 0.77. Is 29 smaller than 25 because 0 is equal to 0? No, it's not. 29 is bigger than 25. So 0 0.29 is bigger than 0 0.25. What about here? 0 0.03 and 0 0.30. Well, is 3 bigger than 30? No, 30 is bigger than 3. So, 0 0.30 is bigger than 0 0.03. Yay, now we're done. Well, we're not quite done yet. So, order from least to greatest. Now we're using 3 of them. So, this one, of course, you can add a 0 over here. So, since zero, it's all 0 point, we could just ignore the ones place now. Is 66 smaller than 70? Yes. Is 70 smaller than 75? Yes. Therefore, 0 0.66 is smaller than 0 0.70 because 7 is bigger than 6 in the tenth. And in case you haven't noticed, for 50 and 49, it doesn't matter that 9, which is in the ones place, is bigger than 0. It matters that 5 is bigger than 4. It works the same way. You go from left to right. The more you go to the right, the smaller it gets. The smaller the value, at least. And then it's 0 0.75. OK. This is also a bunch of 0 points, so we could just ignore that. And 24 is smaller than 25, which is smaller than 29. But that was, that, that was quick. So 0 0.24 is the smallest or least. And then it's 0 0.25. And then it's 0 0.29. Over here, it would be 77, 60, and 6. Well, 6, 77, and 60. It doesn't, it's not rocket science. It doesn't take a genius to figure out in grade four that six is smaller than both 77 and 60. So 0 0.06. And is 77 bigger than 60? Yes. So then it's 0 0.60 and then it would be 0 0.77 as the greatest. Now this one. Three, 0 0.03. Okay. Everything's equal on the first one, and then there's 3, 0, and 3. So 0 is obviously smaller than both 3 and 3. So it'd be 0 0.03 as the smallest. And then it'd be, well, the next one, the hundredth place, is 3, and this is 0. So 3 is bigger than 0. So the next smallest one would be 0 0.30, and then the biggest one, the greatest one, would be 0 0.33. Done. For real this time. So we're back to problem solving. Where we choose a strategy. This is nice. Kyle bought birthday balloons for his brother, Jin. Their friends, Steve, Ryan, and Dan, each held one balloon. And Kyle's mom and dad both held three balloons. Kyle and Jin had twice as many balloons as their mom and dad. How many balloons did they have altogether? So what do we know? Well, three friends each one balloon. And then mom and dad, I'll just put M and D. That's the ampersand, which is the M and symbol. Each three. And then Kyle and Jin, so Kyle and Jin, K and J, each two M or 
2D because they had twice as many as their mom and dad. Okay, be sure to ask the teacher because this can mean twice as many balloons as their mom and twice as many balloons as their dad. Or it could mean twice as many balloons as their mom and dad together. Which it isn't the case, as it turns out. So step two, plan. Choose a strategy. You may draw a picture. Draw each person with the number of balloons they are holding. Or a balloon with the number on top of it that says the number of balloons they were holding. You can also use a four-step plan. The four-step plan is just the understand, plan, solve, check. That's it. So here's a draw a picture plan. So these are the three friends. Each have one balloon. This is mom and dad. They both have three balloons. And then this is Kyle and Jin. Okay, so it's six. So it turns out it isn't mom plus dad. So one plus one plus one is three. Plus three plus three is nine. Plus six plus six is 21. Is the solution reasonable? Yes. Reread the problem. Carl bought birthday balloons for his brother Jin. Their friends Steve and Ryan and Dan each held one balloon. Kyle's mom and dad both held three balloons. Kyle and Jin had twice as many balloons as their mom and dad. How many balloons did they have all together? Well, we, we got the facts right, so the answer is reasonable. How can we check our answer? Well, we could do some good old multiplication and use other strategies. Use any strategy shown below to solve. Okay. Jamie had an aquarium with eight fish. He had half as many plants, twice as many small rocks, and a quarter of the amount of filters. How many plants, rocks, and filters did he have? So he had half as many plants. What's half of eight? Four. Four plants. He had four plants. And then small rocks is twice as many. So what's two times eight? Sixteen. Sixteen small rocks. And a quarter of the amount of filters. What's 8 divided by 4? 2. So 2 and 2 filters. Done. Logical reasoning and just math for the win. Each morning, Joanna jogs with her dog. They jog for two miles and walk for one mile. How many miles do they walk in a week? So I'm assuming that they don't count the two miles. So since they walk for one mile each morning, and there's one morning every day, and there's seven days in a week, so one times seven would be seven. They walk Seven miles in one week. How many miles do they jog in ten days? In ten days, okay. So since there's one morning every day, and there's ten days, that'd be ten mornings, and they jog two miles every day, or every morning. So 2 times 10 is equal to 20. They jog 20 miles in 10 days. Julio has four cats and two dogs. How many total legs does... Okay, do his animals have? 
That's a strange question. How many ears altogether? So usually, cats and dogs both have four legs. Of course, there are three-legged dogs. But we're going to assume that they all have four legs. So uh, he has four cats. And four cats, each of them have four legs. That's four times four. Plus two dogs. Each of those have four legs. So two times four. So four times four plus two times four. Equals to 16 plus 8 equals to 24. So there's 24 legs. And how many ears? Usually, cats and dogs have two ears. Sometimes they may only have one. But the usual is that they have two ears. So 4 times 2 plus 2 times 2 equals to 8 plus 4 equals to, oh that looks like a okay equals to 8 plus 4 equals to 12 there are 24 total legs and 12 total ears. Yay! Martina ran the 100 meter dash in 14.8 seconds and her friend Sandra ran it in 14.2 seconds. Who won? How much time did she win by? Is 0 0.8 bigger than 0 0.2? Hmm, let's take the zero off. Is eight bigger than two? Yes! So in a race, the less time you take, the better. So Sandra won. How much time did she win by? Okay. Subtracting decimals is just like normal numbers. Well, almost just like normal numbers. Except instead of lining up the ones digit, well, you technically do lines up the ones digit. Instead of lining up the last digit, you line up the decimal point. So, 8 minus 2 equals to 6. And then 4 minus 4 is 0, and then 1 minus 1 is 0. Sandra won by 0 0.6 or 6 tenths of a second. 0 0.6 seconds is enough. You don't need to write 6 tenths of a second. Now we move on to section 6. Fraction and decimal equivalence. Marsha runs in track and her workout includes a 3.5 mile run. I can never understand SLG people, but okay. And a 0 0.5 mile worm down. Okay, usually people call it cool down. What is the fraction equivalent for Marsha's workout? What do we know? Well, she runs 3.5 miles. And then we're going to call it cool down. We're going to call it cool down. Because worm down just sounds so weird. And then 0 0.5 mile cool down. Make a plan. Well, we could just use, well, math. Carry out our plan. Change the decimals. 3.5 and 0 0.5 to fractions. So we know that 0.5 always means, well, 1 over 2, or a half. So then it's 3, this is a mixed number because there's 3 holes, and then 1 part, 1 and a half. And 0 0.5 would be just half. Alright, now that we're done that, step 4 check. Is the solution reasonable? Yeah, yeah. Reread the problem and check our answer. 
Marsha runs in track and her workout includes a 3.5 mile run and a 0 0.2, 0 0.5 mile warm down. What is the fraction equivalent for Marsha's workout? Well, we got all the facts, right? So our answer should be fine. Write a fraction and the decimal to determine the shaded part of each model. Now this, oh, that's a mixed number. That's a mixed number right there. So there's three holes, three fraction and decimal, so then that'd be three point over here. And this one is, oh, a half. It's actually 50 over 100, but that simplifies to a half. So three and a half, and we just converted it up there, 3.5. What about this one? That's 5 over 10, 5 tenths, so that's 0 0.5. And 0 0.5 is a half, and 5 tenths is also a half if you simplify it. And this one! Oh, oh, well, all right. That's also 5 over 10, which is also a half and 0 0.5. And this, this is 3 over 6. Huh, kind of looks like one of those hazardous symbols. 3 over 6 simplifies into 1 half, which is 0 0.5. Done! Now we're on the last section, where we combine everything that we knew. Decimals, fractions, and mixed numbers. To compare fractions and decimals, you can use a number line. Or you could just, you know, do what I told you and... Convert everything and then just look at the numbers by their place values. Technically, it's like looking at a place value chart, except you don't actually need the chart. So let's do this. To compare these numbers four and a quarter, four and four fifths, four point six, and four point five. So first we need to convert these. This one would be equal to four point two five. And this one is 4.8. Because if you make this into something over 10, it would be 8 over 10, and this would be 25 over 100. So here, we do it in the place value. So we realize that the ones are all equal, so we can just not mind them. And the tenth. Well, 8's the greatest, and then it's 6, and then it's 5, and then it's 2. So from least to greatest, it would be 4.25, because 2 is smaller than everything, except 1 and 0, but there isn't any 1 and 0. And then it'd be 4.5, and then 4.6, and then 4.8. Done! Now let's do some practice problems and end it, sooner or later. Compare, write, greater than, smaller than, or equal to. So here, what do we know about this? Well, we know that it converts into 2.6 repeated. It just keeps going six, 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 and it just keeps going. So six repeated, a dash, well, not a dash, a line over the digit that repeats is, well, the symbol for repeating. So is six, two point is, well, equal, so six is bigger than five, right? Therefore, 2.5 is smaller than two and two thirds. What about this one? Well, nine's the same. But the next digit, 3 and 0 are not. Is 0 bigger than 3 or is 3 bigger than 0? 3 is bigger than 0. So 9.3 is bigger than 9.03. What about this one? Oh, that's an improper fraction. How do we sort out improper fractions? Well, we divide, well, we do some division actually. How many times does 4 go into 5? 1. And, okay then. So what's 5 minus 4? 
1. So 5 over 4 is equal to 1 and 1 fourth, which is equal to 1 and 1 fourth. So these two are equal. Then we move on to the ones over here. 7 and 7 eighths and 7.7. .7. So what is something we could convert 7 and 7 eighths into? A decimal. And what is that decimal? Well, let's do some long division. Do, 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 long division. Now we don't actually need to do the entire long division since we figured out that it's 0 0.8 something. And 7.8 something is already bigger than 7.7 .7 because 8 is bigger than 7 in the tenths place. And everything before that is, well, equal. Now, this question. Six and one tenth, and six point six and one tenth. Six point one. They're equal. What about this one? Well, let's convert this. This is 13, and if we make an equivalent fraction that has a denominator of 10, it would, this bit would be 4 over 10, so 13.4. Is 13 equal to 13? Yes. Is 0 0.4 equal to 0 0.2? No. Which one's bigger? Is 4 bigger or is 2 bigger? 4 is bigger. So, yay! Now let's do these little questions. Order from least to greatest. Okay, let's convert all of these. 3 fourths is well known to be 0 0.75 and 1 fourth is well known to be 0 0.25. So, let's compare the tenths place. 2, 3, 5, 7. Well, I guess we know what it is now. Greatest to least. Ah, I see. I see what you're trying to do there. So the greatest is 0 0.75, which is 3 over 4. And then the second greatest is 0 0.5. And then the third greatest is 0 0.3. And then the least is 1 over 4, or 0 0.25. Now this one. We're going to convert all of these again. Ah, well, it's obvious that this one's the greatest because it's six whole parts instead of five and something, and six is always bigger than five, unless it's negative, but we aren't doing negatives yet. 6.0 is first, and now it's a battle between these guys. So this is, oh, this is technically five and a half because this can be simplified. 5 and a half is 5.5. And this one is 5, and this one can be made into an equivalent fraction, and it'd be 5.4. So since 5 is all equal to each other, but 3, 4, and 5 aren't, and 5 is bigger than 4, and 4 is bigger than 3, then the next one would be 5.5, or 5 and 2 fourths. And then the next greatest one, or the smaller one, it would be 5.4, which is 5 and 2 fifths. And then, last, but actually the least, is 5.3. Did you get the joke just then? Did you? Okay. Okay, I guess nobody's laughing. Now this one. It's all 10, so we can't really do anything right now. This one is, oh, okay. 10 and 1 tenth. And this one is 10 and 5 hundredths. So we have 10 for everything. We can't really do that. And then we have two with ones that are obviously bigger than the two with zeros for the tenths. Well, tens. 
place. Now it's a battle between these guys. So we know that the next digit will have to be a zero because we can't eliminate anything except zero. And zero is obviously smaller than five. So 10.15 is the greatest out of all of these. And then it's 10 and 10 over 100. And then it's, uh, which one's bigger? Just 10 or 10 and 5 hundredth? 10 and 5 hundredths because just 10 and 10 and 5 hundredths. Get it? Now make sure to write the answers in the original form, not the converted form, or the teacher might decide that, you know what, I'm going to take some marks off because this isn't proper format. So, we're done that chapter. And I guess I'll see you next time.